Welcome to our lecture online and here's a really good example of how to deal with torques namely the ladder problem or the sliding ladder problem. Not only that, it can be a very practical problem as well to let us know how safe it is to climb ladders. Alright, let's assume here that we have a ladder that has a mass of 30 kilograms, a person with a mass of 80 kilograms climbing up the ladder and there's friction on the floor, so the coefficient of friction on the floor between the floor and the ladder is 0.3. Assuming that there's no friction against the wall, typically the walls are smooth and the ladder can very easily slide along the wall, so that's a good assumption there. And let's say that the, is, the ladder is placed in such a way that the angle is 15 degrees with the vertical. All right, so part A, when the person reaches one third way up the ladder, uh, will the ladder slip at that particular position? And secondly, if the answer is no, and I think it's no, but let's figure it out, can the person continue up and can the person make it all the way to the very top of the ladder without the ladder sliding? And that is probably more in doubt. All right, let's do the problem. And normally what we do here is we start out by saying that the sum of all the torques about some pivot point adds up to zero. And so let's assume at this point right there that this is our pivot point. Okay. Let's assume, let's try to find all the forces acting on the ladder. So we have the force of gravity pulling the person down this way. All right, so that would be the big MG, like so. Then we have the mass of the ladder, which acts through the center mass coming this way. And so that would be little MG. Then we have the uh, floor pushing back. That would be the normal force like so, the floor pushing back. And then of course there will be a friction force uh, of the floor pushing back against the ladder in this direction. That would be the force friction, which is equal to the normal force times mu. And let's call this mu sub one, let's call this mu sub two, so we're talking about the right mu. That would be mu sub one here. All right, and then there's one more force. We have the ladder pushing against the wall, the wall pushing back, and then there, since there's no friction, that force has to act perpendicular, and so let's call that force of the wall. Now, notice here that there are three forces in the vertical direction. The weight of the ladder, the weight of the person, they both act downward, and then we have the normal force pushing upward. And of course, those three forces must add up to zero, which means that the normal force is equal to both the weight of the ladder and the weight of the person. All right? Secondly, we have two forces in the horizontal direction. We have the friction force pushing to the right, keeping the ladder from sliding, and then we have the force on the wall pushing this way, and you can see that if the force of the wall is greater than the friction force down there, the ladder will begin to slide. So what we need to do here is find out what the friction force is, which is simply finding the normal force, multiply that times mu, and then we need to find out what the forces of the wall against the ladder. For that, we'll have to use this equation right here. For the first part, we really don't, to find the normal force, because here we can simply use the sum of the force in the y direction must add up to zero. So let's start with that one. So for part A, we can say that the sum of the forces in the y direction must add up to zero, and so we have the two negative forces, which is equal to minus mg and minus little mg, so those are the two forces caused by gravity acting downward, and then we have the normal force pushing upward which means if I then rearrange the equation, we can say that the normal force is equal to big MG plus little MG, and so that is equal to the big MG uh, is 80 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared, plus the little m, which is 30 kilograms, the mass of the ladder, times 9.8 meters per second squared, and that will then equal the normal force. So let's get that first result. So that gives us a total of 110 times 9.8 equals 1,078 newtons. All right, so the second thing we can do now is now that we know the normal force, we can figure out the friction between the ladder and the floor. So force friction which is equal to the normal force times mu, and then we call that mu sub one. So it's equal to 1,078 newtons. Multiply it times 0 0.3. So if we multiply it times 0.3 equals, and we get 
323.4 newtons of friction force keeping the ladder from sliding. So is that enough to keep the ladder from sliding when the person on the ladder is one third the way up the ladder? All right. So to do that then is we now use, have to use this part of the equation to figure out what the force is over there. And what we're going to do is we're going to pick the pivot point right there. Okay, so if we pick the pivot point right there, we don't have to worry about the normal force because that goes right through the pivot point, and we don't have to worry about the friction force because that goes through the pivot point as well, and so the distance from the line of action the force to the pivot point will be zero, so no torques. So the only force we have to worry about is the big MG, the small MG, and the force of the wall on the ladder. All right, so zero equals, again, let's remember that clockwise torque is positive, Counterclockwise torque is negative. Again, that's the way I do it. You can do it the other way around. It makes no difference. All right. So we have the big MG. And since that would cause the ladder to rotate in a clockwise direction, it's positive. And we have to multiply that times. Let me mark it. The distance 1. So that would be the perpendicular distance from the pivot point to the line of action of force, which is this distance right here. It's not very big. And so let's call it D1. So there's D1. All right. Now, we have the second mg, also clockwise torque, and now we have to know the distance from this point to this point, which is this distance right here, let's call that d2. And I see an equal sign there, that doesn't belong there, that should be a plus. Because we're adding the torques together, and they're both positive. All right, next we have the force of the wall on the ladder that would cause the ladder to move in a counterclockwise direction. That's minus the force on the wall. And now we need the distance. We need the perpendicular distance from the pivot point to the line of action of the force, which is this distance right there. And so this is here. This would be distance 3, so times distance 3. Now let's try to figure out what distance 1, 2, and 3 are equal to. All right. So we have... 0 equals big MG times distance 1. So we have this little triangle down here, so let's draw this little triangle. We have this little triangle right here. This is a third of the length of the ladder on this side. Um, this angle here is 15 degrees, theta equals 15 degrees. And then we have this distance right here, which is distance 1. All right, so distance 1 is opposite of the angle, so distance 1 would be L over 3 times the sine of the angle. So this would be L over 3 times the sine of theta. All right, plus little mg, the weight of the ladder, times D2. So let's draw a little triangle here. Now D2 can be found by saying it's uh, this distance right here, down here. We still have the angle theta up there. And now notice that this triangle is formed by hypotenuse, which is half the length of the ladder, L over 2, which means that distance 2 is the hypotenuse, L over 2, times the sine of the angle theta, because the D2 is opposite to theta, so times the sine of the angle theta. All right, so now we have found distance 2 minus the force of the wall on the ladder, times distance 3, which is this distance right here, which is the same as this distance right here. So we have a third triangle. Hmm, where do I put my third triangle? Let me put it over here, kind of out of the way. So there's my third triangle. This is distance 3. Remember, it was this distance from there to there, but I moved it over here. Same thing. It's the whole length of the, the, the ladder. This is the angle theta. D3 is adjacent to the angle, so we have L times the cosine of the angle theta. L times the cosine of theta. All right, now we have found distance one, distance two, distance three. Now let's just go ahead and, oh, wait a minute, what are we looking for? Ah, we're looking for the force on the wall. We're looking for this variable right here. So let's move this over to the left side of the equation. And also notice that uh, we have an L in each term, so the L can cancel out because we still have zero on the left side. So now moving that negative term to the right side, we have the force on the wall multiply times the cosine of theta, which is equal to mg times one-third times the sine of theta plus little mg, one-half times the sine of theta, 
and then the finding, oh, not yet. That's correct so far, right? Now, what I was going to do is I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by the cosine of theta. So moving this over here, which allows me to solve for the force on the wall. And that force on the wall better be smaller than 323.4 newtons or the lateral slide. Okay, so force on the wall is equal to big MG times one third times the sine of theta. So big MG, big M is 80 kilograms. So I have 80 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times one third times the sine of 15 degrees. And we add to that little mg, and the little mass is the mass of the ladder, which is 30 kilograms, times 9.8 meters per second squared, times 1 half, times the sine of 15 degrees, and take the whole thing and divide it by the cosine of 15 degrees. All right. Let's find out what it is equal to. <clears throat> so this is my calculator. So we have 80 times one third Okay, I'm going to do plus 30 times one half, that's plus 15. They're both multiplied times 9.8, so times 9.8. And they're both multiplied times the sine of 15 and divided by the cosine, that's times 15 tangent equals, and looks like the person is lucky. The force on the wall is 109.4 newtons, which is less than the force friction, so the person is, is fine. Now, what would happen if now the person climbs all the way to the very top, what would change? Well, what will change now is that distance one will change. So let me grab another color. Let's see if this brown works. I'm running out of colors here. So for part B, ah, that works. We're going to change distance one. So instead of being the person being one third of the ladder, the person will now be completely up the ladder, which means that distance one now will be L times the sine of 15 degrees. So what will then change is that this one third will change. What will change now is that this will now become the whole length of the ladder. So we're going to have the force on the wall is equal to 80 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. And the only thing that changes here is that the person that will be at the top of the ladder, D1 will now be a much greater distance, three times the distance, three times one third or one time the sine of 15 degrees plus 30 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. The rest is still the same. The ladder still has the mass acting through the same point, 15 degrees. The whole thing divided by the cosine of 30 degrees. So notice that instead of having one third, we now have one person is not one third of the ladder, the person is now completely at the top of the ladder. And let's see what the force on the wall will be now. All right, so doing this again, so we have 80 plus 30 times a half is 15 times 9.8 times the tangent of 15 equals n. Now the force on the wall is equal to 249.5 newtons, which is still less than the 323.4 on the friction force, so the person can climb all the way to the very top and not worry about the ladder sliding. Of course, as long as the surface is dry and the coefficient of friction is a solid 0.3. If the coefficient of friction is different, like 0.2 or 0.15, the ladder will not stay up, the ladder will begin to slide. But that's how to do a problem like that.